I have three steel impellers, which I have debound already thermally uh, with the standard kiln. And I did apply a little bit more of spray adhesive uh, because these parts were very fragile. As you can see, uh, just touching that first one over there uh, broke it. But now I can kind of move it around and uh, we'll be able to now transfer that into our microwave kiln. We'll be using just a basic microwave for these experiments. I also purchased and built this cabinet so the microwave could rest. I was inebriated while assembling, so it took me about three times as long as a normal primate would. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to test is what this microwave does to one of my centering trays. I want to make sure that it's not going to overheat the actual crucible during the microwave center. In fact, we just want to heat the part and hopefully have the crucible relatively cool to the touch. Now, I also purchased a new infrared thermometer, and this goes up to about 2700 degrees Fahrenheit, or as you can see, that equates to about 1500 degrees Celsius. Beep, beep. To test uh, what, uh, what temperatures we get. Even though this microwave is pretty cheap, I actually very much like the controls on here. They're manual, I can control the power level with this one, and I control the time with this one, so it's very easy to use. Um, I'm going to rest the microwave crucible on it so that uh, we don't break the glass turntable. Here I get a temperature reading here. Okay, we're sitting at 83 degrees Fahrenheit, 84. Let's do a minute. So there is a noticeable ambient temperature increase. Yeah, so we've jumped up quite a bit, uh, peaking around 150 degrees. Now I did hit this uh, for another about 30 seconds after because this uh, battery that came with the device wasn't good. But uh, that's quite substantial for um, a short amount of time in the microwave. I imagine that we're going to have to do probably uh, anywhere from the two to four minute mark. Okay, I also have a graphite mold. I don't know if you can see this, but it's a very small rectangular shape. Um, I'm wondering if this uh, will heat up the same way as the refractory did. Uh, if it's cooler to the touch, um, then that might be a better uh, piece to rest the actual microwave kiln on. I haven't really done any research on this, so just going to try it. The negative. Okay, there were uh, clear sparks coming down from the edges. Not going to do that one. Alright, so next... What we're going to do is very similar to any other metal centering uh, steps that I've done before. This is our microwave kiln. The walls are lined with silicon carbide. I printed that with virtual foundry filament and casted this crucible. It's a little rough, but I think it'll work. Now, the interesting part uh, that we just saw was that graphite seemed to conduct very well, <laughs> which is not surprising. Um, but the ballast that we'll be using for our uh, impeller has uh, a bit of graphite in it. So this will be quite interesting. We have elements on the walls, graphite ballast, and the uh, actual piece is going to go right in here. Now normally I would cover this entirely, but I kind of want to get some temperature readings um, of the part, of the crucible, of the elements, and uh, see kind of what the difference is between those. And I'm going to be using this slightly broken piece. Uh, I'm just gonna put this right on top and I'm not really gonna cover it. I'm just going to rest it into the ballast and uh, try this in probably two to three minute bursts and see what our temperature uh, changes are going to be at. So I'm gonna get this in and we'll go ahead and move to the, to the microwave uh, here in just a minute. Okay, moment of truth. Again, I'm going to make sure I do this in short bursts and measure the temperature frequently to make sure that we don't blow anything up.
There is some noticeable smoke coming out of the crucible. A little alarming, but I'm gonna keep letting it do it. After all, I have ventilation here, so we'll make sure to flip that on very quickly. I'm gonna check this in about 20 seconds and see what happens. We're reading about 138, 140 uh, degrees down at the peak. So I'm gonna turn this back on and uh, we're gonna measure the uh, inside. I know you can't see this. I've got it down below the camera, but this is quite incredible. Just within one minute, the temperature was uh, inside the kiln has climbed to about 400 degrees Fahrenheit, reading directly off the part. So I am going to try to zap this for another two minutes, uh, maybe three minutes to see if the smoke doesn't uh, get too much and see if we get a, a actual center here. Okay, we just finished a three minute cycle. So I believe the smoke was from the initial spray binder, which I put on uh, to just support the part while I transitioned it into the crucible. And I am going to check to see what our temperatures are. I'm gonna make sure that I have gloves and you can't see it, but I'm also wearing protective eye gear as well as really just protective eye gear. So anyway, let's pop this open, get a measurement. Crucible is sitting at around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a very reasonable temperature to manage with these gloves. These go up to about 800 degrees, but this was three minutes, so a total of four minutes from the original. I'm going to take this out, and I'm going to measure the temperature. So you might not be able to see that here, but uh, I'm going to put this on the ground and see where we need where we need to be at. Steel needs to go up to about 2,200 degrees uh, to center properly, so we're going to try to get up to that point. It's been about 10 minutes, I think, total time in the microwave. I've been stopping and checking and pulling it out and then heat uh, uh, testing it. So we're going to see where we're at now. The last reading we got up to was about 900 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're going to see what happens uh, after this last three or four minute run. Okay, at this point, I am taking the uh, tray out and I'm cooling it. Uh, it had peaked at around three. 50 uh, to around almost 400 degrees so we're going to cool that down and we're going to see where we're at with this uh, inside so again we'll get a reading 350 on the outside 360 okay outside of the kiln is um, peaking at around 370 degrees so we're going to go ahead and set this down open it up and see where we're at on the inside here. It is looking quite interesting in there. Uh, we are sitting still at around 879 degrees. I'm going to call this piece uh, done for now. I want to see uh, what a continuous piece would do. I'm going to try to do a continuous uh, full send 15 minutes on one of my other impellers. Let's go uh, do that. Also, if anyone was wondering, this uh, piece uh, is it's pretty oxidized, but that's to be expected. I, I kept starting, stopping, and uh, that's what we get. So let's see if we get a better test next. All right, we're doing it. 15 minutes. I've got the ventilation off so you can hear me. Uh, but I'm going to be turning that on pretty soon because I believe the binder that I put on is going to be burning off and this fan here will blow that into the ventilation. I'm going to be monitoring this pretty closely uh, so that we don't have any sort of uh, weird anomalies. 15 minute full send finished. Let's get the gloves and see what happens. That's hot. Lid is off, 900, 500 degrees external, and max uh, 955 degrees Fahrenheit 
uh, for the uh, for the surface of the kiln. So that's pretty hot. That took 15 minutes, but it's not hot enough to center the steel. So I think what's going to have to happen is we're going to have to increase the time here. And um, I'm also thinking that for the next one that I do, maybe apply a little bit of uh, flux around the, around the surface. So I might pull this one out and just start fresh after I let the, the uh, internals cool down here a bit. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. There are steel crystals formed on the edge of this part. I know because the way that the light is shining off of them. Uh, again, the camera might not do it justice, but this is pretty promising. I think the next one will be flux and 30 minute full send. Last debound impeller for the night. I have a layer of flux that I've applied on the surface. Um, there may have been a crack while I dropped that in, but I don't think it's going to be too big of a deal. Uh, so we're going to give this a 30 minute center time in the microwave and see what happens. Okay, moment of truth. I've let this cool down for about 10 minutes. We did see some very red hot streaks. Oh, interesting. So the piece appears to have oxidized, but it's actually holding up to a few hits. I think this means we have a few more experiments to do in our near future. This is uh, only 30 minutes in the microwave. Unfortunately, we have run out of debound parts. Maybe we'll even try to debind in the microwave. I don't know, but uh, this is very promising. We saw some steel crystals and I think uh, that this result might lead to a few interesting discoveries. Uh, if you enjoyed the content, go ahead and like the vid and uh, subscribe if you want. And uh, hope to see you on the next one. All right. Bye.